some more classic Scrug style endings you can use and I'll show you, we'll break them down, I'll break down all five of them and then show you some spots you could use them or what songs you might want to use these in. Alright, let's jump into ending number one. <laughs> Alright, so lick number one is going to be a classic kind of fiddle tune, four bar ending lick. It's actually going to start in measure two. I just did some pinches in measure one to kind of hear how it, it gets into the lick. But it's a classic four measure ending. It's, it can either be done two ways, as a solo ending or it could also be a call and response. So let's break it down. We're going to... I'll show you the pinch and then show you the ending. So you got, you're gonna start with just a classic pinch. And then we're gonna do a two five slide. And then pinch. And then put your index finger on the fifth fret of the second string and roll forward five, two, one. And then fifth string. And then backwards. With a pull off, so you have finger up on the second fret of the first string and do a forward reverse roll and then a backwards roll with the pull off so you have and then just a little ending so here how it's a call and response you have so a lot of times in fiddle tunes that might be one person might play that part and then the other person might go in measure four. So let's break, let's play that whole part. So we have. So you could use that in like a leather britches or any fiddle tune in G, Big Sciota, Girl I Left Behind. You could use it, you could use it in a bluegrass song as well, but I would, I would use this personally more for like a fiddle tune. So like, um, like I said, leather britches, any fiddle, I mean, you could also do it with capo too. You could do it on Sally Gooden or uh, Cherokee Shuffle, you know, any, you could do it Cripple Creek, any, any fiddle tune kind of in the key of A or G. We're just working out of G position here. So let's do it a couple more times, a little faster. <laughs> The other thing you can do is you can modify either the first part or the second part. So you can do something like... Or... Something like that, or... Something like that, you know. So once you get it down, you can kind of modify it and make it your own. Think of it like I said, as the call and the response. So you have the call and then you have the response and that's the parts that you can vary. So I'm in this example, I was varying the response. So you could do or you could do like a bluesier lick. Something like that, you know. What's more important in this lick is the timing 
and that it's four measures and it's a call and response. So one more time. <laughs> That's lick number one. Let's jump into lick number two. I use this one on a faster song like a Foggy Mountain Breakdown or Shuck in the Corn. Anything that's like a faster tempo, this one works really well. And this one I will preface, this one definitely is a little bit harder to tab out. To get it exactly how I play it, it was really difficult to tab it out just to get the nuances and get it into the tab. So what I want you to do for this one is play it along with me and follow along and I'll show you the parts in the tab that you want to be more careful with and watch, but then there's certain parts that, again, like I said, don't translate that well to tab. So let me play it and then I'll break it down. So you have... So we're going to hit the open four string and then come down and do a two, three hammer on. Thumb middle there with my right hand and then five, two, one, keep your third fret down. And then the Foggy Mountain Roll. And then right here I start sliding up. And this is the part that doesn't translate that well to the tab. But I basically mute the note with my middle finger, second finger. And I'm going to slide up. And it doesn't actually matter really where you get up to. I listed 19 in the tab. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to grab your third finger, which is the more important one, on the 19th fret and then 20, and then 21, and then I do like a back strum, or you can do a forward strum or brush, either way, but I like doing the back, back brush. So you have, and the timing's a little weird too, so it's one, two, and one. So it's on, the, on beat two, and then on the and of B3, so it's two and three and four and one and then three. Like I said, I think it's easier to just play along and mimic it. I'll try and do it slow. This one actually is probably a little bit easier to do faster, but let's try it slow. lick too. So if you want to hear that slide you can or if you want to mute it. Probably depends on how fast the song is. Like I said, I would use that on a faster song. I don't think, personally, I don't think it works quite as well on a slower song. But that's one I like to do for like a breakdown. Lick, ending lick number three is a classic one. This one works good on like a swingier tempo. So we're going to go. And then you can do a strum too if you wanted. So a little cheesy, but it works. start with the, the open fifth string and then we slide from five to eight which is making that note the same and then we play that note again and then ninth fret on the third string seventh fret so you have and then you go seven nine seven on the second string and then eight. And I'm doing thumb, index, thumb, index there. And like I said, I'm swinging it a little bit. So this one works on a slower tune, you know, something. What's also cool 
about that lick is it's more or less movable. The fifth string, you, if you want to make it more movable, you can just take out the fifth string at the beginning. And then you're just working out of this D shape. So you can do it up here in C. shape you can even do it down here something like that and you don't have to actually slide all the way from back here you can really slide anywhere as long as you get up to the right note so you can just play it wherever you want that's a fun one Okay, so that's lick number three, let's move on. Okay, so lick number four is another one that's a little bit hard to translate to the tab. So let me play it and I'll break it down. So it kind of starts with this descending idea that Earl used in, you might've heard it in like Earl's breakdown. He did a lot of this. Uh, extended walk down idea that Earl did in that song but he used this intro or this ending in a bunch of different songs again this one would work on a faster song you could even go so you could combine this one with uh, lick number or ending lick number one the other one you could combine with ending lick number one is the last one I said this lick four so we're gonna start up on the eighth fret and what we're gonna do which is hard to translate to the tab is we're gonna use our fifth string as a timekeeper so we're gonna go so we go eight and then I bounce off the fifth string but I don't want to hit it too hard and then back to the eighth fret so you have and then I hit the fifth string again so it's one two and three one two and three one two and three and then seventh fret and then fifth string again and then ninth fret third string, and then fifth string again, ninth fret, or seventh fret third string, excuse me, seventh fret. So you have. So you really just want the fifth string to be a timekeeper. So it's kind of like a ghost note. See how those ones are in parentheses in the tab? If you have to hit it, it's not the end of the world, but it just doesn't sound quite as good if you hit it loud. Put your pinky up on the 11th fret of the second string, middle middle finger 9th fret, and you bend that note up while pinching, and then 5th string, 8th fret, 2nd string, and then 9, 7, so you have, and then you can either go right here, but I like going up high personally, same two notes, just an octave apart, 16, 17, so you have, closer to the neck. Something like that. So, like I said, you could also combine it with lick number one. So that's lick number four. So it's that, just that walk down idea. That one's kind of movable too. If you don't hit the fist string too hard, you could do it in C. works out of this D shape, but you kind of want to make sure you don't hit the fifth string too hard there. Do it there, you could do it in D, up. Uh, you'd have to do it in D down here. So that's just a little lick, but like I said, you might have your capo on, you could do it with your capo. But I'm just
just doing it in G mainly. So that's, that's lick number four. And lastly, lick number five. Let me play it and then I'll break it down. So this is kind of an extended lick. We're going to do that same part we just did. But we're going to do it twice. So we go. And then we're going to do a little, what's called a two, five, one. So we're in the key of G. Our two chord is A and our five chord is D. So we're going to play a quick A, D, G. So we have Two five one uh, two five one ending is very common in like jazz music. So that's just like a chord substitution. It just adds another chord that makes it a little more exciting. So we have, and then I slide down to my A chord here. So I'm doing six five seven, and then I'm gonna do a forward reverse roll, hit the fifth string, and then slide my hand up to be in a D bar chord. But I'm just using all my fingers, and then go backwards. And I pause there on a quarter note, so you have. And then I go down to my G and pinch. So you have. So. So. five ending licks you can use. What I would do and what I do with any new lick is just try in a bunch of songs. I call it crowbarring it in. Crowbar it into every song and see where it fits, see where it doesn't. You have to really try these endings. You might not always nail it perfectly, but that's where you just kind of can laugh about it. Laugh with your friends, laugh at the jam session, say, okay, I'll get that one next week. I totally botched that ending. But if you never try it, you're not going to know if you succeed or not. All right, so that's five Scruggs style endings. Give it a try. Hopefully it helps you out. Good luck and keep picking.